Previously on Woodbury. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Woodbrew video. In the last video, we worked on the trailer build and you guys seem to really enjoy that. We wanted to say thank you for all the love and support of that video. It's performing really, really well and it's very nice to see. But unfortunately, only 10% of you guys are subscribed that are actually watching over the last week. So we highly recommend if you enjoy this content, if you enjoy this series, please consider subscribing. It helps us out a ton and it also makes sure that you don't actually miss one of these videos. Now, unfortunately, this video is starting out with a bit of a boo-boo because as we were lifting this up, up, it dropped right onto Molly's fingers and yes in hindsight it wasn't the best option we should have started by doing something a bit safer which is what we're doing now trying to get this camper lifted up to a safe position where we can actually roll the, the trailer around and put it back onto the trailer for the final time but Molly's a trooper and she powered through it for the rest of the day but yeah she definitely got her fingers crushed pretty good which is not ideal With the camper successfully back on the completed trailer, it's time to move back into the shop and start wrapping up the exterior of this camper. We had to do a ton of sanding in this video and clean up a bunch of the epoxy work that we've been doing. If you missed any of the last videos, we've been applying a lot of layers of epoxy and fiberglass. And one of the things that we haven't done that to yet is actually the hatch. So that's also what we're working on in this video is actually applying all the epoxy and fiberglass finally to the hatch. And then these little pieces are actually part of the inner door seal, which is what's going to have the actual rubber seal attached to so that when the doors close, they actually have something to seal against. So a lot of stuff going on in this video using the Avid CNC. This is a five x five CNC machine. This thing's pretty amazing. We've used it to cut out most of the parts on this project. We're using it to cut out some last minute parts that we forgot to cut out beforehand. But go ahead and grab your favorite beverage and sit back and enjoy this build montage. With the door seals done, it's time to move on to the exterior of the camper, doing all of the fiberglass and epoxy work. I'm doing that by mixing up some Total Boat high performance epoxy using the slow hardener so that we have plenty of open time. And the first layer is simply just epoxy. You wanna make sure that you get all your joints well coated in epoxy prior to applying any sort of fiberglass. You actually want that to soak in and fully cure. That way you don't end up with a dry fiberglass joint. This wood will definitely soak up this epoxy very quickly, so it's important to pre-wet all of the edges in areas that you're going to be doing any sort of fiberglass work. 
Then we use Total Boat's Thixo epoxy, which comes in this very convenient little tube, like a caulk basically, and it's thickened epoxy. So as you can see, it actually sticks and stays in place, which is super convenient for overhead joints and things like this. We're actually doing a fillet joint in all of this door seal area to not only apply some waterproofing here, but also to add some structural strength. Also, another cool way to thicken epoxy is by using this silica powder, which Total Boat also sells as well. You just simply mix it in and basically keep adding some until you get the consistency that you want. It helps really thicken up that epoxy so it'll stay in place. And we use this in a lot of the overhead areas where we didn't really want it to run down and end up being, you know, real gloopy. So you can see how much thicker that is. And this is uh, pretty amazing stuff. And I added this actually into a Ziploc bag and cut the corner off and used it sort of, you know, as like a frosting sort of, you know, cake, cake decorating thing, whatever they're called. This actually worked out really, really well. I wanted to try all both methods and uh, yeah, worked out just as well as the thick cell epoxy, but that thick cell epoxy is definitely super convenient. Now, the next day we used some 80 grit sandpaper to sand over all the areas that we applied epoxy to. This just creates a highly bondable surface for the next layer. And then we simply used some cleaning products to clean that up really, really well, remove all the wax and degrease everything prior to applying our fiberglass. Speaking of fiberglass, we're using this really convenient roll of fiberglass tape here, and we're gonna go ahead and cut everything to a length prior to adding any of the epoxy, just so that we have all of our pieces ready to go for when we add in the epoxy. And basically we're doing this on every single joint and seam on the entire exterior of the camper. The process is very simple, wet the joint again, lay down your epoxy and it will actually start soaking through that epoxy as you see it starts getting clear and then you want to go and add some more epoxy on top of it and just make sure that the product is fully penetrated through the actual fiberglass and you want to make sure there's no air bubbles which this little roller tool really helps to release any of those air pockets out of the fiberglass. And you also wanna make sure that it's not too dry. You don't really wanna see the weave. You wanna have a really good coating of epoxy on there. If you get a dry joint with fiberglass, it can lead to delamination in the future. And this is all sort of new techniques that I'm learning. So, you know, if you have any tips, feel free to leave a comment down below of any epoxy and or fiberglassing tips. I'm in the process of uh, learning and I would really appreciate any tips or advice you guys have. Now, if you're interested in any of the products that we're using in today's video, feel free to check the links in the description below where you can see all of the products that we're using as well as get some potential discount codes. Anything we have, we'll leave links down there too in the description below so that you guys can check some of the stuff out and try it out for yourself. With the epoxy and fiberglass drying, it's time to turn our attention back to the hatch. We've been meaning to glue on these side panels for quite a while now and haven't done so. As you'll see in the background, we have the iFixit logo. As you guys know, iFixit is an awesome brand fighting for your right to repair. They actually sponsored the first, I don't know, eight or so videos in the series for Fix It February. And I just wanted to give a quick little shout out to them. Really appreciate everything that they've done for the community and everything that they continue to do for our, you know, right to repair. It's a super important thing to Molly and I. So, you know, if you're interested in checking their stuff out, I highly recommend it. They're not sponsoring this video. I just thought I'd mention it because I saw their name in the background. I've mentioned this in prior videos, but on basically every single corner of this camper, it's getting a round over and that's to help the final finish adhere. Finishes do not like corners, but especially epoxies and eventually what we're gonna have on the X here, which is bed liner. They really need that curved radius to have more surface area to actually build up a nice layer of coating to have good protection and durability. So basically every single spot that needs a round over is, is getting a round over.
Now I specifically left these doors oversized in my modeling because I wasn't 100% sure what the final opening size would be after the epoxy and other coatings. And so now I'm finally just trimming these down as I have a better idea of what the gap needs to be. Ended up needing to trim just an eighth of an inch off, so I was relatively close, but this was made super simple just by using the track saw. And honestly, I'm just sort of hoping that this works out because these are very experimental, so who knows? But for now, it looks like they're gonna work really, really well, and they're fitting much better than before. We're again applying the round over to the outside of the doors and then we also had to enlarge the actual opening for the window and for that we loaded up a rabbiting bit in the router and this just allowed us to ever so slightly enlarge the hole with using a guide bushing and then we also used a giant and I mean absolute giant of a flush trim router bit to flush trim that sort of rabbited area so that we open up the hole basically about an eighth of an inch all the way around and bits and bits has actually been sort of the unsung hero of this entire project because we use their bits on the cnc machine we use their roundover bit we use their flush trim bit and now the rabbiting bit so basically bits and bits products have cut more or less every single part on this camper which is kind of crazy to think so if you're interested in those we'll leave links in the description below if you want to check them out they make super high quality products and I can promise you you won't be disappointed if you end up getting one. One of the things that was super tricky with this door was figuring out how to get these door latches in and working. I wasn't really sure in CAD what exactly that sort of slot and everything needed to look like so it did require a little bit of finicky work afterwards but we ended up being able to get those in place. And then it was time to add the fiberglass to the hatches. So we're moving uh, real quick this week, getting a lot of stuff done, and hopefully this will be the last fiberglass work. Probably not, but at least it's fun thinking that it will be the last fiberglass work on this project. Now the doors of this camper are arguably the most vulnerable parts of the entire camper to water intrusion as well as just delamination and bowing and warping. So we're going the extra mile here by doing several coats of penetrating epoxy which is basically like a water like epoxy that soaks right into the grain. So more or less we'll be fully locking in and sealing this plywood and turning it into sort of an epoxy substrate of sorts because it will be pretty well impregnated with epoxy which should more or less make it waterproof and hopefully we don't have any of those issues. This has been one of those projects where you start working on something and then while you wait for that to finish drying, you have to jump over to something else. So it's just a whole lot of different tasks all wrapped up in the same day. So I'm jumping back into the interior and doing what I can while things dry. You comfy? Just chilling out, doing some overhead sanding. I guess a six month old baby will uh... Yeah, I think the support <laughs> issue is not gonna not gonna be a problem. All these welders always complaining about overhead welding. Well, I'm doing some overhead sanding today. Lot, lots of overhead sanding. All right, guys, we're gonna walk around the camper, and I'm gonna share with you some of the details of 
more detail-oriented bits and pieces that we've been working on this week because there's been a lot of work that's been going on but a lot of it's just finicky small stuff. So we'll start over here with the doors. So buying doors for a teardrop camper is very expensive. A set of doors is approximately $1,000 and they come with their own issues. A lot of people run into them leaking and just quality control issues buying those doors. So, you know, I wanted to make our own door. And while doing that, I wanted to make one that's oversized. So this is quite a large door. In fact, our door is 33 and a half or so by 38 so this is bigger than pretty much any door you can buy which is very nice and it also fits the ergonomics of the camper however building a door is extremely difficult and there's very little information about it online so i'm going to share with you briefly sort of my ideas involved with this and hopefully it works. So let's start with door construction. It's constructed the exact same way as the camper walls. It is a half inch outer ply, a three quarter inch inner ply, and then a final finished ply that's a quarter of an inch. So the sandwich ends up equaling actually a little less than an inch and a half because all these materials are a little less than their full dimensions. And then we have sealed the crap out of it. Now these, this plywood is exterior grade plywood. However, there are still moisture issues that can happen. So we've been putting some penetrating epoxy in every nook and cranny possible. And hopefully that's gonna help keep the doors flat. Also when we glued them up, we put them on flat surfaces so that hopefully they don't bow because that's really the biggest concern. Now the second big concern with building your own doors is how the heck do you actually seal them? So I went with basically the tried and true automotive method of sealing things up, which is basically make a place for the water to go because you know it's gonna get in at some point and you'd rather have a place for it to, to divert and get out than try to make it just 100% waterproof. So with that said, we have a flange that sticks in the inner part of our door here. It sticks in about roughly an inch or so and it's also inset, so there's a spacer. So it's actually inset to the cabin a bit and then we have this fancy trim lock, which is a, a 90 degree bulb piece of trim here that slides over this edge. And it simply clicks into place here very nicely. See that? Pretty neat, huh? So once this is fully installed, it will essentially make a rain gutter all the way around this door frame. So as long as the door comes in contact with the bulb, water can actually get in here, no problem, run around the, the frame, way around this bulb, and then out the bottom. And to help facilitate that and also help waterproof that, we've done some epoxy filleting in all of these doors, which is super important to seal all the corners really good, but also make sure that there's no like crevice or anything that water can force its way into. So by having these sort of fillets, it makes the water be able to easily get out of the door frame because again we know it's going to get in there so actually a lot of the work that's been going on this week is getting this entire interior ready for finish so as you can see we have these flanges in here there's actually some epoxy on the outside here that still needs to be sanded that again is just sealing up any sort of crevice from that rain gutter possible but then also i had to get in here and sand everything again round over all these corners and it took a lot longer than I thought it would, but however, it is basically ready for finish. So in the next video, we will be applying all of our interior finish and more or less completing the inside. We still have to put insulation in the floor and run our wiring, but I haven't done that yet because I know that we're just gonna create a mess when we start putting finish in here and stuff. So figured we'd put that in last. But yeah, the interior is looking really good. Some of the questions, we've had are about these interior fenders I'll address as well. So these fenders obviously are in the actual camper. Now we have the option to lift the camper up and make it sort of go like a deck over, over the trailer wheels. We chose to go with fenders on the inside and the mattress is actually gonna kinda go around these fenders and they work, they work sort of as side tables too. So there'll be a place to be able to put your phone and things and a drink on the side and they're not sticking out into the cabin enough to really matter because your hips are roughly in this area when you're sleeping. So really these are pretty well out of the way. 
We've also been wrapping up the exterior of the camper, making sure that all the transitions are nice and seamless. So anywhere we had fiberglass, which is basically all the seams, we want this transition to be nice and smooth, which I'm very happy with the results there. There's basically no transition at all, which means that when we apply our finish, you're not gonna see sort of a hump like you did on the floor. We didn't really try to do that at all when we did the underside of the camper. So if you go back to that video, you'll see what happens when you don't actually try to feather this in. But that takes a lot of time, and it also takes filler in some instances, which is what I'm working on here. I'm trying to pay more attention to this front section since it's an area that you will see the most. So I wanna you know, go the extra mile here. The funny thing is though, is that we're doing bed liner. So bed liner is a heavily textured product and it hides stuff like this really well. So I'm, I'm kind of going real overkill here, but I'm also taking this opportunity to learn about fiberglass as I go along to Im improve those skills. So there's been a lot of work and just tidying things up and getting ready to apply primer, which will happen in the next video. So in the next video, we're going to have a lot of progress to be done. The interior is gonna be basically finished up and the exterior is gonna potentially even have bed liner on it. Been wrapping up a lot of the final touches. And lastly, I'll take you around to the hatch to show you a few things there. Keeping with the waterproofing nature of this entire build, basically everything's got an epoxy and fiberglass. I have gone again, just so overkill with that, just wanting to learn as much as I can about it. But this area here is going to have a seal on it for the hatch. And so applying some fiberglass and epoxy here will really help give that seal a good, flat, uh, durable bonding surface, meaning that it should last even longer on there, as well as it should be just fully protected from any water that comes in contact with it, which is obviously super important. Also have this area sealed up here. And my thought process behind this is that there is a hinge that goes here, and then the off chance that that hinge ever leaks, I would rather have that water run under that hinge and down into the galley than I would having it run back inside the cabin and going to the interior. Anything back here is super easy to fix and replace. Stuff in there is more difficult, so that's sort of the idea behind that. And then lastly, we've got another piece of uh, semi-structural uh, fiberglass and epoxy here, which kind of helps hold this extension on here. And this thing is pretty much ready to have the components go back in, but we're going to wait and do that until after we get this whole thing sort of finished up. It's going to be much easier that way. But one of the things that I've seen a lot of people in building teardrops seem to ignore that scares me personally is like, for instance, on this corner here, you know, we have two exterior grade plywoods. Again, exterior grade. And then we have one interior grade birch plywood on the inside. Now, the issue is, is that these interior grade plywoods have got a super thin veneer. I mean, it's like paper thin. So if water ever comes in contact with this, it may not structurally harm it initially. However, that veneer is going to bubble up and come loose almost instantaneously and you're going to have pretty major delamination issues shortly after that if the problem is not resolved. So in this camper, the one weak point is this interior ply that we've used on the inside of the camper. So I want to make sure that any intrusion point is well protected. And lastly, we're actually wrapping up the hatch as well. We got the final coat of epoxy on, you know, this is a multi-step process, but this is hopefully the very last bit of epoxy that we need to do. This amount will let us sand and sort of feather this in like we did on the front up there. Might need a minor amount of filler, but this guy is pretty much wrapped up other than some sanding, which is really good news. And like I said, the doors are pretty much wrapped up, although they will need some more fiberglass probably. I'm thinking I'm gonna fiberglass the outside. Anyway, you know, it's one. this is one of those projects when you start thinking about things that just keep adding up, but we are getting there. And I will show you one other place that quickly that we applied this filleting to. So we applied this nice bit of thickened epoxy here as a fillet around this corner. That not only seals it, but it actually adds a ton of structural strength to this um, fender. You know, you would think that this fender would be weak because it's wood 
And in fact, a lot of teardrops, you can't even stand on their, their wheel wells and they're made of steel. This one, you can stand on and it's made of wood. Easily, easily, and jump. <clears throat> this thing is very, very strong. I've been really happy with how, how it's turning out. And uh, yeah, I know wasn't a lot of visual change in this week's video and I've been rambling a lot. Molly's going, come on, finish her out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, last thing I'll say before before I turn turn off here is that a lot of people have also asked about plans, and we have all the intentions in the world to make plans available for this. However, it's going to be for version 2.0 because, like most projects, we've learned a lot on this one, and we have some ideas of how to improve it for the next one. So you have to wait a little bit, but there will be plans really amazing plans, I should say. <laughs> the best plans. <laughs> there will be plans available eventually. We just want to build version 2.0 first, and then they'll be made available. And that will also give us some time to test some of the aspects of this one. So yeah. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for all the love in, in the last video. That was amazing. That video did extremely well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one too. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.